Welcome back to the Exchange Server 2016 Client Access Services course. In this module, we're going to talk about address lists and policies. So this is a, a way of creating different address lists for users if you need to have that ability. Uh, we're going to look at address lists specifically, and then we're going to look at address book policies. So what are those, what do you use them for, and so on. But let's get started with address lists. So address lists is one of the benefits of Exchange, a product like Exchange. If you're a end user and you're using a product like Outlook.com or you have email from a uh, ISP or something like that, then you only have your own address book and you have to manually gather email addresses and, and build up your address book over time so that you can email people. But in an organization, uh, to expect users to build up their own address book so that they can send emails to other people in the organization would be ridiculous. Uh, you want to make it easy for them to find somebody and uh, give it to them in an address list so that they can see who's in this organization and just send a mail. In some organizations, you know, there might be 100,000, 200,000 or a million people in that organization and if you don't have a list of everybody, then it's going to be really hard to find them. And uh, there might be a bunch of people with the same name, you know, a popular name uh, like John Smith. There could be uh, 5, 10, uh, 20 people with that same name. And then you have to populate even more information about that user so that people will be able to determine who's the right John Smith to send the mail to. Uh, so address lists can make that possible for you to find the right place and the right user so that you can send mail to them. But it, yeah, but it can also have other uh, uses. Well, um, the neat thing about Exchange is that, and it's done this for years, is that it creates default address lists as well you know, upon installation. So uh, some of the default address lists that is, it creates are uh, all, the, all rooms. Uh, so it just filters out based on att attributes. Uh, it'll just show you just the room uh, objects. Uh, mm -hmm. Other default address lists include all contacts, all users, all distribution lists. Uh, and of course, there's the gal, and I think there's one even the, for public folders. So, if in a large organization where you have thousands and thousands of recipients, uh, that simplifies uh, your ability to when you're in Outlook and you open up the address book and you're just interested in looking at, say, extra, you know, con mail contacts. Uh, then you don't have to, you know, look at through thousands of different objects. You can just go to the address list for all contacts and browse through there if you yeah. choose to. So it, it, it's it's easy to find somebody that way, and you don't even have to know the email address. You just look through this list. Maybe you can run a search where you look for a specific um, name and a specific location, and then you find the user that you want to send the message to. Right. Um, in some organizations, they even populate things like the manager alias inside of Active Directory, and then you have this ability to find uh, things like the hierarchy, and you, 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 you can see who reports to who. A hierarchical address book. Yes. Uh, correct. And then, and then uh, you, it's maybe you're in a meeting with somebody and you met this person for the first time and you have this great meeting and he says, okay, that's great, let's do this, send me a mail on your proposal. You walk out of there and you forgot the guy's name. <laughs> you forgot, uh, you know, uh, where he's from, you know nothing about him, but you sort of remember the connection that he reports to another person, another manager, and then you can go and surf the address book <laughs> and you find the manager and you see, oh, these are the people that report to him. And then you can then uh, select the right person to, to, to send mail to. That's, that's really important in uh, Japan also. They have a very, um, uh, I think the HAB or hierarchical address book, was dr the need for one was driven by the, the Japanese culture. They're very... Um, uh, tied into that organizational type uh, of seniority, yeah. Um, yeah, seniority complex, if you will. <laughs> yeah, so you need to 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 uh, uh, have ability to say, okay, you you can't just send somebody directly 
uh, a male, maybe you need to find out who's his manager first. So it's part of the culture and so on. So you need to have a, a, a view of that um, hierarchy. And that's what the hierarchical um, address book gives we, you. And we, we talked about the default address list, but it also lets you create custom address lists. So um, when you want to uh, segment uh, one department from another department, it gives you that ability. For instance, you can have uh, an ad you can create an address list that's just for your uh, marketing department, and then a separate address list just for your sales department. Now, we're not talking about seg uh, segmenting where one can't see the other. Mm -hmm. That's a more uh, involved topic than what we're talking about now. But it just allows you to select the address book for people in your department that you want to communicate with, as opposed to going through the entire gal. Yeah. So uh, again, uh, uh, lots of custom options as well. And uh, one thing that Exchange also provides is the offline address book. And this is uh, the ability for you to download the address book to the client so that you can view the address book uh, while uh, you're in offline mode. So you're in a plane, you want to also find a user to send a mail to, so you have the offline address book. And the offline address book has the ability for you to download changes every day. So as uh, people get employed in your organization or they change the information, the exchange servers will create a delta of changes every day and make that available to your clients for them to download so that they don't have to download the whole address book every day, offline address book every day, because in some organizations, the offline address book can get really large and that could have quite a significant impact on your bandwidth. So uh, we provide um, small increments and in deltas so that people can download those deltas uh, and keep their offline address book uh, up to date every day. Um, so the offline address book is another neat feature of Exchange to allow users to um, view the address book as well. So uh, let's look at a demo of address list in Exchange 2016 so that uh, um, we can uh, maybe um, view some of them that's available. So to manage uh, your address list in Exchange, uh, you have to go to your organization tab, and then uh, here's address lists. And here you can see some of the defaults that's available already, uh, like uh, all contacts. Uh, like Joe said, you have an address list that just contains all the contact objects inside of Active Directory. So if you uh, want to, you know that you want to send a mail to a contact, you'll find that user in there, and you don't have to look at all the other noise. You also have a default address list called uh, all distribution lists. All distribution lists uh, is obviously all the groups that is mail enabled that you can send mail to. So if you want to find a distribution group, um, then you can look in that list. Um, all rooms, all the conference rooms and so on, all users. And then you have the default global address list, which is basically everybody that's mail enabled groups, resource mailboxes, user mailboxes, everything is in the global address list. And then you also have your public folders and so on. And then I created a, a address list for IT staff. So this is where you have a specific uh, address list that you can then uh, make available to users so that they will be able to, um, in Outlook, look at the uh, address list, drop down and select the IT staff one, and then they can just see who's a IT staff member and then send it to them directly. Uh, but let's create a new one, um, and I'm going to call this one finance. And uh, what you need to do when you create a new address list is you, you specify a path, so where will this be displayed um, inside of your uh, hierarchy, so you can make it uh, a, almost a hierarchical view. So if you do it, say, based on region, you can say, uh, uh, there's an address list for everybody in Europe, and then under Europe, there's smaller ones with everybody in Germany, everybody in France, and so on. So you can have a, a, a hierarchy like that as well. Uh, or you can just say, okay, this will be in the top level. And then uh, you can specify uh, which recipients, maybe you want to only uh, do um, contacts, or you want to do only mailboxes, and so on. So I'll, I'll just select everybody. And then you can add another uh, filter criteria to say, I only want to see users in a specific uh, 
location uh, or a specific department so um, or a recipient container so um, if I have a, um, a recipient container for finance users I can select in in this list I can select the um, a recipient container and then I can select the finance group here if I had one or if uh, say I have finance people all over my organization and uh, finance is a um, a department or customer tribute value or something like that or um, you know I set one of these things then I then have to specify a value to say if they in the finance um, if they have finance in the department value of the uh, um, that uh, Active Directory user, then they will form part of this address list of finance users. And then I click on save, and now um, I will have a address list um, that is um, a, for finance users. It gives me a warning here to tell me that it's not affected, uh, immediately I need to run update um, so that it will be populated as part of the offline address list that uh, users will see. And to do that um, I run update here uh, and it will then um, do Give you another warning. Yeah, tell me that it might take a, a, a few time but you know I have a small environment here and it completed successfully and it's up to date. So that is uh, uh, a custom address list um, that you can create in your exchange environment and a really nice way of, of um, giving people a different view of the um, global address list. Another thing that you can do in exchange server is to set up a address book policy. Uh, when you set up an address book policy you're going to limit the view of the global address list of users. Um, so this is a concept that is required by some organizations to um, set up compliance or to set some sort of privacy concept up so that you will not see everybody in the organization. Maybe you work in this top secret organization and some people are on the research department and you don't, you don't want to show all your users that the research users exist. Uh, so then you can give them a subset of all the users in the organization. By default, everybody can see everybody. But in some organizations, you want to limit that view. Uh, this could be for compliance reasons. Maybe uh, you're a financial organization and you don't want uh, stockbrokers to send uh, emails to uh, uh, the analyst. So then you set up a rule that they can't see the address list. Or during mergers and acquisitions is yeah. it's a popular thing to segment uh, the address book like that. So uh, address book policies gives you that uh, way of segmenting. That's the, 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 the word that they use to, to, to say, I only going to present you a, a filtered view yeah. of the complete address book. Back in the day, uh, there was a whole big convoluted process to do gal, gal segmentation. Mm. And uh, finally, I think it was it was in 2010 or 2013 that they introduced address yeah. book policies, Exchange which made things a lot easier because before, and check my thinking here, uh, memory, before you had to use things like, uh, was it interorg or IO REPL or? Before it was actually based on, on ECHLs. So it was based on the permissions that you set inside of Active Directory. So you would uh, almost break your Active Directory so that people can only see a part of Active Directory because an address list is a translation of um, a view that they can see in uh, the global address list. So you had to break Active Directory yes. and set up a different access controller's echo. I remember uh, it, was, it was a very specific process yeah. you had to follow and if you didn't follow it per the white paper that was out there yeah. then it wasn't supported. Yeah. So that, that was, uh, and, and it was really easy to break as well. Yep. And so now with uh, address book policies, you can segment it in a supported way. This doesn't prevent people from sending emails. So if you, if you can't see somebody in the gal, you can still send him a mail. Um, once you send a mail, Exchange will know if that user exists or doesn't exist and deliver the mail anyway. But 
Uh, if it's for compliance reasons, you may want to set up something like a transport rule as well to block somebody from actually sending a mail. But it gives you uh, at least the ability to limit who can they see in the address book as well. Uh, another um, case where this is used quite often is uh, in, in schools where um, you give students mailboxes and you only want the students to see their classmates. You don't want them to see uh, people in other classes uh, because that's got nothing to do with them. They can only see their own classmates. They can send their mails and they can send mails to their teachers. Um, so they have a limited view of uh, who they can see. And then the teachers will see only students in their own classes. And, and other teachers. And other teachers. Right. Uh, but and they, maybe the principal. And maybe the principal, but they won't see anybody in other classes that they don't have anything to do with. Um, so that's another example where um, this model actually works quite nicely. If you want to implement this, you have to implement a bunch of things. So you have to implement your address lists that you want to, uh, that's got that limited view of the users. You also have to create a offline address book for every view that you want to present. Uh, so offline address book is the, the address book that they can download to see the address list offline. And then a global address list for every view. So in this example here, you see there's an address, a global address list for division one and another uh, global address list for division two. And then uh, you also have room address list. So division one room address list and division two room address list. Once you created all of those objects, so uh, the address list that uh, division one can see, they have a users one, they have a distribution list one, a contact one, they have their own address, uh, offline address book, their own gal, and their own room list. You associate all of those to a address book policy object. And you do this with the exchange management shell. So you create a new address book policy and you say this address book policy uses this address list, this global address list, this offline address book, uh, um, all of those objects, room address list, once it's associated with this address book policy, then you associate that address book policy with the user. So uh, as you associate that with the user, the user will then see that limited view and he will only see the address list that you associated with that address book policy. So it's really simple to set up. Um, you set up your different address list first. You start with that. What views did you, do you want in your organization? Um, you set up multiples of those. You associate that with the address book policy and then you assign that to a user and then that will be that user's view of the world. From that day on, that user will have a limited view of the address books. And if you don't assign anything, they will see the, the default stuff, the default global address list and so on. So this is the ability to, to refine that view and, and, and make the, give them a, a filtered view on what is available in the address list of the organization. So that wraps up uh, address lists in Exchange Server 2016. And, uh, we hope that you'll stay for our next module. Thank you.